and um, to show a little bit of uh, proper kind of testing you can imagine that you don't want to real, uh, use real people in here and uh, maybe also uh, limit the amount of test objects that you want to test is to just one car because it's uh, already a pity that uh, smashing such a nice shiny car new shiny car into a wall is a bit of a pity but anyway that is um, that is a bit beyond the point um, let's uh, resume class and uh, so that you know, we can have a look at what we really want to do uh, yes so you should be able now to see my face again with this uh, KM caster uh, keyboard stuff I'll monitor. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, also uh, the text uh, design for testability. Well, if we um, talk a little bit of a f uh, software engineering, then when you're talking about software, then there are all kind of important aspects that you uh, would have. And often the most important, although not uh, really the only important uh, requirements that you would have, would be the functional requirements. And actually, the functional requirements tell you is is the input and the output are they correct? So if I give you this input, uh, is the computation is the result of the uh, of the program is that then correct? That would be the very short, brief concept of functional requirement. If the output is output is wrong, well then you don't know that the functional requirement hasn't been met. But there are also uh, important non-functional requirements that you uh, will have. And not only requirements, but also aspects, quality aspects of uh, code. And one of uh, one Im very important, which is quite often forgotten, is the um, the the readability of code. How well can someone understand what you really wrote here? That is a very important aspect, because you must think that in the industry, not so much in your exercises here, but in the industry. A code is written, but then uh, written once, but read more often. It's always read when someone has to extend the code or try to find uh, a problem with that, or uh, make uh, add a new feature because this new feature might uh, influence the original feature in some way. And you, then you must of of course understand how this original feature has been implemented. And the other important, I've, I've got a, quite a few here now. The other uh, important aspect, non-functional requirement of uh, and quality uh, requirement of your code, is how well can you test it. And testing means that you test something in isolation. I don't know how uh, if you know how, uh, the, for instance, the car industry uh, works, but uh, when they uh, design a new uh, motor or new engine for uh, a car, what they will do is they will not simply put that engine in a car and try driving with. No, they will start. Uh, testing that uh, simple engine that engine on a test bench and see how much power it can produce how efficient it is and what not or if you are testing a real car then you could smash it into the wall but typically what you do do is you test your separate components that is what uh, I am as, as an originally mechanical engineer are quite used to you test your parts before you build the whole thing and that is also for electrical engineering, you test the parts before you build your amplifier or your computer or whatnot. So you are certain that the components that you put into your system um, uh, meet their specification. And specification is something that you can write down in your software. You write down your software requirements specification in an official document uh, SRS. And in this SRS, you write uh, use case descriptions, and from these use case descriptions, you can derive test scenarios, and from these, these test scenarios, you can de derive test scripts. But if you look at uh, driving a car, then the test scenario is quite different from what you need to do when you test the engine. And in, in our case, what you need to do to test one business class, for instance, the business class uh, that is inside a uh, cash register. Yeah. A business class that is inside a cash register takes input, uh, talks to a background service that uh, looks up stuff, um, uh, um, uh, takes a scanner input from a barcode scanner, that is typically what is the case, and also uses a printer to produce a cash receipt. That is a very simple uh, business case. 
and that is what your business class what might all be be all about so what you do is you do not build a uh, a, a cash register with a printer and a background service which provides lookup data with a complete database no you want to m make sure that the business class in isolation works as it's intended and to do that we used the technologies that we've seen uh, shown you before so we will use dependency inversion and in this case we choose a solution to uh, uh, reach that uh, dependency inversion which is called dependency injection it sounds a bit uh, similar and you see these two um, concepts used quite often uh, near, uh, near each other but that is uh, what uh, what uh, what we are doing in this case there's a blue box here in particular do not organize the clan organ kind of stuff oh yes there's a there's a small design hint um, it landed here maybe it's not the best place but it landed uh, over here we, what what we see sometimes when students are designing an application is that they put like things in like packages boxes packages and what you often will get is that um, to do that and use these uh, these classes inside other packages you have to make them public you have to make the the entities public for instance or the the components pu public in all these classes. but if instead you would design your classes in such a way that you define the boundaries that you have um, um, considering the collaborations that you would have then you would put in a package those classes that have an intimate collaboration with each other so if you would uh, be building chairs you have a, would have a seat and legs and screws that would put uh, be put uh, put them together put them all in one package so that they can have intimate knowledge with uh, each other and the only external interface that you uh, need to uh, do a thing that you built to be a chair is uh, you can sit on it and it has a warm cu cushion that you can sit on uh, sit on so if you um, using the visibility aspects of packages uh, as is implemented in, in Java then put those classes that collaborate with each other in the package and use that to structure your stuff anyway uh, testability also implies that you uh, use abstract types quite a lot abstract types the most abstract that you can get are actually interfaces but of course abstract classes are also a good uh, second uh, candidate you should program against uh, abs uh, uh, against uh, interfaces so and not concrete classes and in this case um, in the examples uh, we have uh, we're talking about printers the as far as the business class uh, is concerned the only interesting part of the printer is the method that you use to print and uh, but you do not need a real printer you do not even walk want to walk to the printer to see if the uh, the, the business class printed the correct information no there are other means to do that what you want to do is take your business class uh, and in isolation and look at what the business class uh, needs to do its business uh, for instance what you want to avoid is that you uh, let the business class itself decide how to save stuff the business class should not decide if stuff is saved in or in a file or in a rest service or in a database that is not the business business it is also not not relevant to it should also not be relevant to the business who is providing the service that it needs the only thing that the business needs is to know what interfaces it can use what methods it can use that are defined in abstract classes or interfaces and originally we had this picture on the website it still is on the website because we are looking at the website but it might be a bit confusing because it flips between two states and these two states are this one this is the application so we have here a business class and that business class uses ki some kind of service and that service uh, um, exists in multiple implementations uh, think of this service as you want to look up stuff like prices or you want to uh, insert um, uh, sales records into some service and if you think of uh, database access you would not be far off but that is not the business business the business shouldn't care about who and how things are saved and stored because the business is all about just 
doing the right thing, the com uh, correct computations. And once these computation have been uh, has a result in some kind of result, then it should use the service, but only use it and not know too much about it. So this would in, the, in this case be the business class and the business class will use a service uh, component. Think of REST service, uh, database service is fine, but the business class doesn't need to know. Um, typically, you also see that the business class is in some way talking to uh, UI. And how you, do you arrange that? Well, you give a reference of this business class to the UI so that the, the UI can then uh, react to, bis, to button presses by calling methods on the business class. For instance, here there's an operation in which you input money. That could be the result of uh, someone entering uh, money, uh, so numbers in some kind of text field, and then press the, uh, a button like uh, submit or pay or whatever um, method is defined in the UI class. As far as the UI class is concerned, the business class could get its input and then go about its business, do the computation, look up stuff, save stuff, whatever is defined as the business, uh, as the business business. So this would be the normal uh, use case. Now to make sure that this business class itself uh, is designed in a proper way um, according to the uh, lines of dependency inversion, this business class will not make its own service. Instead, it must be given the service. You must pass in the service. And that is the role of the assembler class that you see here on top. So this assembler class, think of that assembler class as the main class that starts your application. What it does, it makes a business object, it makes a UI object, gives that UI object, uh, UI object the business class. It will make a, a service object uh, that it, uh, the, the business class needs to do its business. It also passes that into the business class. And once all this assembling is being done, then the application is started. Um, the way that it's actually done is, is, is typically something like the assembler first makes you, um, let's see, first makes a service, passes the service to the business class, and then passes the business class to the instance of the UI, and then makes the UI run. And then the user will see the UI pop up as a window and see all the features, all the buttons and whatnot uh, that is defined in the UI uh, appearing on the screen. That is how it will work uh, once the application has been built. So this would then be the world in which the business class uh, lives once it is complete and once it has been trained exactly to do what it needs to do. And the training that takes part in the test driven development phase of that business class. Now to make sure that everything the business class uses, uh, does with the services or does with these, uh, for instance, entities, you see here ent entities and that is, uh, uh, the reason for that is that you have customers and products and that has typically something to do with sales. You want to see that that works correctly. Now in the test scenario, in which you are test driven developing your business class, what you will have instead of the assembler in this part, you will have now a business test. And that business test class takes the role of quite a lot. In particular, it takes the role of providing an implementation for this service factory that is used by the business class. You see that over here, the, uh, the, the business class uses some kind of service factory. And that service factory itself is mocked. So with this mock, it can make sure that it, the business class, whenever it asks the service, give me this thing or give me that thing, it will, give, uh, it will get these mock implementations. So it, it can then provide a mock implementation of something that can get, for instance, a product or a mock implementation that gets something like a, a customer or do, do a write or read. And anything that uh, the service factory should provide can then be provided by this mocked version. So this, um, this business class can then interact with this service and in particular will Im interact with one of these implementations uh, for the two business cases maybe that you might, uh, might have. So this business, class, this, this business test class will provide all the things that the business needs to do its business. It provides them as either real classes 
in cases that that is the most applicable, as we've uh, talked about in the previous part of this lesson, but also as mock, uh, mock objects um, for the cases that, uh, that that is most applicable. And that is what the exercise, uh, the second exercise is all about. So we, what you see here is the business class will only talk to abstract classes um, or interfaces uh, these uh, instances for these classes, uh, abstract classes and interfaces are provided by the test class so that the test class itself can exactly inspect what the business class did with those um, instances, with those dependent, dependent on components to uh, verify that everything is, uh, is correct. Um, as an example, well, no, that's, that's, I think, a bit too far. And as an example, I have here uh, the idea of a data uh, access object, but that is actually a, a bit too early because this sounds a bit like working with databases, but let's simply stick, sorry, let's simply stick to some kind of service that uh, our business class needs. And you'll see that in the exercise, uh, in the exercise, uh, the services that this uh, business class needs is a lookup, a price lookup for uh, a product. So the scenario is uh, there's a scanner that comes from the user interface that is a barcode scanner. It produces a number. With that number, you go to the, the service and ask it, give me please the product information of this product. With this product information, the business should uh, take uh, have uh, uh, special uh, methods like calling, uh, inspecting if uh, the, uh, the product has special properties. And if so, there's a specific uh, interaction required, which you then can observe in your test class. Um, yes, that is th that thing. Yeah, what you will see when you start using stubbing and mocking, then sometimes uh, you will see that you did too much stubbing or mopping, mock mocking. And that is something also that what uh, Mokito uh, detects. It will see that you did some kind of uh, train some mock for an inter interaction which never occurs. And that is something that is important to know because uh, either this interaction should have happened so that you know your business code uh, didn't do the interaction that you inspected, expected, or uh, the interaction has never been used and then your mocking is actually over complete. You did too much uh, for the information. In both cases, repair the problem. So if you require that your business code uh, uses a specific implementation, test implementation, so, so a mock of a service, then make sure that it uh, works. And if it's not required, then remove the mock because otherwise you will introducing uh, information in your tests which may later on confuse your follow-up uh, developer because you, uh, you've you set up stuff in your test which are not really required, but uh, the, the, your follow-up developer which is, who is reading your test code doesn't know whether or not it is, is completed. So in both cases, repair the issue that you, that you have. Um, and that brings us to um, actually the exercise of this week. Uh, let me talk you a little bit through uh, the whole thing. Uh, this is again a class diagram. It's a bit more involved than the uh, class diagram uh, at the top of the page. But what you can see over here, you have one uh, cash register class, which is in the middle, and which is the important thing, because important things are always in the middle. It's the cash register. This cash register uh, knows about uh, uh, sales services. And these sales services have either an implementation, so that would be in real life, of the actual uh, business application in which this class plays a role, but also there's a sales service mock. And the methods that are provided by this interface is look up a product uh, using an input, uh, an int, which is the barcode, and produces a uh, product. And the other one is a method which is called so, uh, sold, and it takes a sales record, which is a special class that should be somewhere, oh yeah, that's over here which contains information about this sale that is, has been made and that must somehow be, uh, be saved. So after you have a transaction in your cash register, you must have a sold, sold uh, um, interaction with, your sale, uh, with a sales record. And what a sales record should contain is the barcode that has been specified, the best board before date, uh, sold on the date on which you sold the product, the price on the label, uh, the price that you actually sold it for, 
uh, and the amount of uh, product that you sold, like uh, pieces of bananas or uh, kilos of, of uh, whatever that you uh, specify. In this case, it's just uh, numbers, just in values. And of course, they, they, that such a sales record could have getters. I, we have simply left them out because they do not provide much information in this diagram and it would make it only less readable. And uh, the sell record defines actually a physical product. And that physical product is a banana or a, a bag of potatoes, which has a barcode printed on it or put on, on it. And if you have a perishable, so-called perishable products, then they have a best before date. That is, they should have been uh, consumed before that date, but should be sold a bit earlier. And that is uh, something that you can have. Not all products have a best before date. In our examples, you have cheese and bananas, and I think um, that are, uh, have a best before date. But there are also products that don't have a best before date, like a lamp that's, uh, that doesn't perish when, you, um, when you're simply having it lying in the shelf. So that, that is uh, okay. And then, of course, this physical product itself uh, defines uh, a product which has uh, well the, the standard attributes like a short name, a description, price, and so on. And one thing is important, there's a, a boolean. The idea is that uh, the cashier who is operating the cashier um, to scan products uh, uh, will be able to scan a product and from the scanned information the uh, lookup service can look up the product and then can find that it is a perishable product because the barcode itself doesn't contain anything like date. It just specifies this is uh, potatoes and maybe uh, the amount, but not the, the date. So the date must be read by the person, the, the cashier who is uh, operating this cash register. So whenever there's a perishable product, typically the cashier knows that beforehand to see, oh, there's cheese coming on, and then uh, he or she has to read the, the uh, date label. And if the date label is inside the range of, well, this, this product is almost, uh, has almost reached its best before date, then it should be sold for a lower price. That is typically the, the operation. And it should not be sold after its best before date because then um, the, uh, the shop can't uh, guarantee the quality of the product anymore. So these are the business rules that you actually want to test. Um, so um, whenever the cashier scans a perishable product, then the, the cash register in its UI should uh, pop up a calendar from which a cashier uh, selects the date that is printed on the on a product, or if the date is a, a, a month uh, ahead, so in advance, then it can simply the, the cashier can simply press uh, submit. This is okay. The 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 date, the best before date, doesn't have to be considered. So there is an extra interaction when you scan a perishable product. So when you do that, the interaction with uh, between cash register and the user interface should be a bit different. So that is about selling perishable products, but also non-perishable products. If you have non-perishable products, then uh, when you pass your product against uh, past the scanner, it says, simply says bleep, and then you can take the next product bleep, and then you can ta take the next product bleep, and then take the next product. If it's a perishable product, then the calendar pops up, then you press the button, if you try to scan the next product, it should uh, um, uh, beep with a low tone. Say, so, mm, wait, you have to specify the, 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 the date of the product that you have scanned just now so that we can test if it needs to be sold for a lower price. And um, try, well, make this exercise and then you'll get a feeling for what dependency inversion and in particular the implementation dependency in injection means for your uh, for this application and then you should be able to uh, complete that and i hope that uh, after completing the exercise you've understood how you can make sure that uh, a business class indeed uses abstract classes or interfaces for the services that it needs so that somewhere along the line you you can uh, produce an implementation for such a service and knowing that the business class will use that service as it is intended that would conclude um, the lesson for today but of course there might be uh, questions let's see if, if there are any i see Niels 
Teres has a question. Uh, how should we program programmatically determine the best before date of a scanned product if said pr uh, perishable product is assessed by the cashier? The cashier should select a date, and you must assume that the date that the cashier selects is the perishable date or the best before date of the product. That's, that's the idea. There might be more uh, questions or there might be um, uh, additional remarks or advice from my colleague teachers. Yeah, maybe maybe one little remark or advice or summary or whatever you want, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, dependency injection, etc., the difficult words. But what basically in the end is what you want to avoid is using the new keyword, right, yeah. in your business yeah. class, because that is that is in the core, uh, because that that causes uh, coupling and yeah. dependency, right? Yes, it is indeed so that that uh, you recognize the problem if you see in new that the, the business class creates its new uh, service or its uh, its own uh, printer and you recognize it from the new keyword because but what, what you particularly do not want is that the business class chooses its own implementation determines by itself which implementation it will use no you will pass it an implementation you will give it an implementation you will insert an implementation a dependency insertion injection or inject an implementation into the business class. You will give it the things that it needs. That is uh, indeed the idea, and you recognize it indeed from the new keyword. Thank you. Well, then I would say uh, that's it for today. It was long enough, I think. It's uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, it's complex. You want, uh, want to study um, the, um, the documentation on the website and maybe some old other references uh, in your own uh, time. Um, but, um, please start working on the exercises of this uh, week in this week so that if you have any questions that you can ask them uh, on Wednesday when you have your when you have your um, uh, practical uh, session or on Thursday depending on the class which you are in. I'm not sure if you mentioned the mini assessments already uh, oh, no. at the beginning. Very good, thank you. Uh, and indeed, um, uh, this week, that is actually, I should say, yesterday evening at uh, 23.59, the first deadline passed. And so that means that we expect students to have the exercises completed. We also have s something called a mini assessment, which simply says that uh, we teachers or we student assistants uh, pick out some students that we want to uh, talk to. We simply phone you when uh, we're using Teams and then we'll ask you to show us your solution. And the reason for that is that, first of all, we would be able to see, uh, to give you some feedback, the things that you might, to, uh, might want to improve or simply uh, look what, to, what you have done so that uh, we, we know what, uh, what is happening. And we also from that can uh, learn what is uh, perceived as, as difficult. The other thing is, of course, that we are testing or verifying that you did your work and that you can explain your solution because that gives us the indication if you indeed worked on the ex exercise yourselves and that you worked, you implemented that uh, solution yourselves. So that is the idea of a mini assessment. And it allows us to keep a finger on the pulse um, on uh, the homework assignments that you, you are making. So that will happen this week. Um, uh, officially, it should be random, but you can imagine that we want to see um, uh, look at the students that haven't been able to uh, complete uh, exercises of week one. We'll simply ask them what the reason for that is. That is that is so. Uh, if you're still in the black, as in uh, in this uh, on this dashboard, still have a black dot, then you can uh, have a high chance of being selected as one of the students that uh, has been picked for this mini assessment. Mind you, pre being present, being accessible at the practical uh, hours is mandatory. So if you uh, refuse or do not, uh, are not available uh, for such a mini assessment, we uh, uh, accept that as, uh, we think that is uh, a negative. So um, um, mind that you should be uh, able to respond whenever we invoke, we uh, want you to appear in the uh, mini assessment. Of course, the yeah. children, 
it's, it's very important that don't see us as enemies because no. now we, we see that you that you hesitate now and then to contact us but we are here to to help and to discuss things right and to see okay, okay. how can you prove things yeah. and that is because making mistakes is, is perfectly fine actually, and actually, do no effort is a problem that is yeah. a problem but but making mistakes is perfectly fine actually actually what you should do is make mistakes because from there you learn and um, the other thing is don't be afraid of us actually you're paying us to help you learn things and experimenting and making mistakes and not understanding but after some little help sometimes just a little bit of help you will be able to solve the problem by yourselves and you'll gain confidence so use us as uh, at, certainly at this phase as uh, providing a service of you helping to uh, helping you to learn things that you want to learn because while well, you're paying for this, uh, this these courses and you're spending time for these courses so indeed use that and um, use the practical session to ask us questions um, but now we'll take the initiative um, and once we're done with this mini assessment of course we are still available for for questions I think we I, I imagine that we start with um, the tutors doing the mini assessments and leaving the student assistants uh, available for helping because they will still be uh, help wanted um, that is the, that's the idea but we'll, we'll see how that works uh, on wednesday any more remarks maybe from student assistants if they are available i see that no i thought that torben was here but it's not not the case then i'll start, start stop recording on my side